telling others about Jesus, if you're not sharing the gospel with them, then you might ask yourself, am I ashamed of the gospel? Are you ashamed of the gospel today? The Bible says in John 5, 21, For as the Father raises the dead and quickeneth them, or maketh it alive, even so the Son makes alive, or quickens whom he will. Salvation is of the Lord. You can't save yourself. But we live in a generation of easy believism where people think that they have accepted the Lord. But it's always on their terms, usually. They think they've accepted God. The problem is, they haven't been lost. We have a whole generation of church people who are saved, but they've never been lost. And God's going to have to show you your lost condition. He's going to have to convince you of your sin. The Bible says that all have sinned and come short of God's glory. Every single one of us have sinned. We've been rebels by nature. There's none that doeth good. No, not one. Yes, we hate God, in fact. We have an evil heart of unbelief. And we need a new heart. We need a new soul. We need to be born again by the Holy Spirit of God. We need the faith of Jesus to be declared righteous before God. And this faith you don't have of yourself. You cannot manufacture this faith. Where is it going to come from? Oh, it's a gift. God must give it to you. But he doesn't have to give it to you, folks. That's the thing. God doesn't have to give you faith. You see, not all men have faith. Not all men have faith. Paul said to, he, he prayed that he would be delivered from unreasonable men. For not all men have faith. But without, without faith, we cannot please God. You cannot please God without the faith of Jesus. You see, it's the faith of Jesus Christ that justifies us or declares us righteous with God. And thereby, we have a basis for having peace with God. Otherwise, You love this world and the things of it, and therefore you don't have the love of the God of the Father in you. The Bible says, do not love the world nor the things that are in the world. If any man ha loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You do not have the love of the Father if you love this world. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away in the lust thereof. But he who does the will of God abides forever. You must do the will of God. What is the will of God? This is the will of God. That you abstain from fornication, from premarital sex. This is the will of God. That you believe on him whom he hath sent. Do you believe today? Have you repented and put your faith in Christ? John the Baptist said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Turn or burn. That's right. I want some of you folks to think about how you've abused the mercy and goodness of God. The Bible says it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. You breathe in God's air. It's a necessity or you die without oxygen, folks. You take in his food. You chew his food. You walk upon his ground, upon this earth. This world is God's. He, he created it and governs it. The earth is the, is the Lord from the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell in. Dwell therein, yes. This earth, this world belongs to God. And you walk upon it and you breathe in his air and you eat his food and you drink his water into your body. Only so that you can rebel against him and work out your, your, your evil ways. It gives you strength to continue in your rebellion. May the Lord show you that God doesn't owe you anything but justice and hell. That's what we deserve. 
The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all they that forget God. Have you forgotten God today? For many of you, God is far from you. He's not in your thoughts. Far from your heart. And therefore the command is turn or burn. Turn or be cast into hell. The Bible says that he that believeth is not condemned. He that believeth what? In God. In his son. What is the gospel? That you believe in the righteousness of God. The righteousness of God is found in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did for sinners. Amen. You see, God sent his son into this world not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. If you do not believe today, if you haven't received Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, then God has no other option but to send you into hell, to cast you into hell when you die. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death, folks. The wages of sin is death. That's what you've earned. Wages. Just like you earn money from your employer, you earn death. For the wages of sin is death, eternal damnation, eternal death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But why should God give you that gift? He doesn't owe it to anybody. If he did, then it wouldn't be of grace. It'd be of works, but we're not saved by works. For by grace are you saved, if you're saved. By grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourself. That faith doesn't come by yourself. You cannot manufacture that, that faith that comes from within. God has to give it to you as a gift. Until God convinces you of your lost state, you'll never cry out to God for mercy. You'll never say like the publican of old, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, the sinner. You will stop justifying yourself in all your supposed good deeds. Like the Pharisee of old who said, I thank God that I'm not as other men. Yeah, I pray twice a day and I fast. I do this and I do that. I belong to the church. I was baptized. I said so many Hail Marys and our fathers. I'm sorry, folks. You may have done all those things and still lose your soul because you love this world. What shall profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What shall a man profit by that? And what shall he give in exchange for his soul, the soul? Can he do I put a value upon the human soul? God created man a living soul out of the dust of the earth. He breathed into man's nostril and created a living soul. But man, Adam, in his rebellion, forsook the commandment of the Lord and ate of the forbidden fruit as his wife, Eve, did give it to him. And by obeying his wife, he disobeyed God. And they both plunged the whole human race into sin and misery. That's where everybody is. They're all in the same boat by nature. They're in sin and misery. But God has to show you that and convince you that you're lost apart from the saving grace of God, your creator, the one who governs this earth. Stop believing the lies of evolution. Stop believing the lies of the public school system. You've been brainwashed to think that sex before marriage is okay and acceptable. That you can go out and get an abortion if you get pregnant. What? Will you be guilty of murder before the Almighty God? He says, thou shalt not kill. And that's what abortion is, murder. The murder of the, unwanted, of the unwanted child. The murder of an innocent little baby that the doctors will cut up in their womb or poison through saline solution. You, know, you ought to study the methods of abortion, death in the womb, and see what it, what it really is. And don't let Planned Parenthood deceive you with their lies. My friends, the whole world is deceived today. It's as though Satan has been let loose. In fact, he may be let loose. I believe he is. And that's why there's so much deception today. Satan runs around as a roaring lion and seeking whom he may devour. He wants you today. That's right. The only answer is the lion, the king of the tribe of Judah. Jesus Christ is also a lion. Amen. Much more powerful than Satan. That's right. And the devil will be cast into hell. He will be judged someday, and all those who forsake God. Will you forsake God? Will you continue forsaking God, or will you stop and begin to get, analyze your life and where you've been and where you're going? You have no guarantee how long you're going to live. People die every day. Prince just recently died, not too long ago. George Michael died a few days ago or yesterday. 
Think about your celebrity idols that you worship, that you think of so highly of. They're human, flesh and blood. They're not gonna live forever, neither will you. For as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this is the judgment. God came in the form of a man, Jesus Christ, to convince people of their sin, of righteousness and judgment, of sin because they believe not on me. Of judgment because I go to the Father. The prince of this world is judged, that's Satan. Of righteousness because Jesus went to the Father. He presented himself to the Father and was accepted. By his ascension into the heavens, he was resurrected from the dead and showed himself to be Lord. You cannot separate Jesus as a Savior from the Lordship of Christ. You either accept him as Lord or you don't accept him as who he is. Jesus is Lord. The disciples always referred to Jesus as Lord. The question is today, folks, is he your Lord or is the devil your Lord? Is your creator God the one you worship or do you worship yourself? Oh, that God might take yourself, show you who you are in yourself and of yourself. You're nothing before God but a sinner worthy of death and judgment. It's only because we can be found in Christ by his grace that we're anything, that we're lovable, that we can be the objects of his favor and salvation. The Bible says salvation is of the Lord. It's not of man. It's not of your church. It's not by being baptized by water. It's not by good works and good deeds. You have none. You need to repent of your good works and good deeds and start trusting in God and what he did through his son, the righteousness of God. Let me read some scriptures to you. It says here... It's in Romans. Romans. Let's read the state of mankind by nature. Romans chapter 3, verse 10. As it is written, there is none righteous, no doubt one. There is none that understandeth or seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are all together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips. What's an asp? A poisonous snake, like a viper. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Yes, we all have murder in our heart by nature. Destruction and misery are in their ways in the peace, way of peace they have not known. The world is crying for peace. But there is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. For the wicked are like the troubled, like the troubled waters that cannot rest. <laughs> Whose waters cast up mire and dirt. Imagine the ocean beating, the waters beating against the, the rocks. That's the state of your soul without God. You're restless, you have no peace. And Jesus came and said, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. Do you have the peace of God today? The only way to have the peace of God is to be justified or declared righteous by a holy God. You see, God is holy. He's righteous. He's, he's just. And we're unholy by nature. We must have the holiness of God. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see God. You will never see God without holiness, my friends. Are you holy today? Are you sanctified? Are you set apart from this world, this evil world, and set apart? for the service of God. If not, then you're lost and you're still in your sins. You need to repent and believe the gospel. I'm greatly interested in this thing called the gospel, which is not preached today by most churches. We've lost the meaning of the gospel. We, we've heard false gospels most of our life in the last 15, 60 years. The righteousness by faith. Romans chapter 3, verse 21. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested. Listen. Being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Christ, of Jesus Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, 
unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For God, for all has sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus, whom God has sent forth to be a propitiation. A propitiation, that's a big word. It simply means the satisfaction, the appeasement. God has sent forth His Son to be the satisfaction through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, His righteousness, that He might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting? Where is boasting? It is excluded. By what law? Works? No, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified or declared righteous by faith without the deeds of the law. You see, a lot of people believe in, like I did, you know, before I was awakened to my lost state. I thought that if I lived a good life, if my good deeds outweighed my bad deeds, that God would accept me and I'd make it to heaven. I had a man long ago when I entered into a Baptist church say, do you know if you died whether you'd go to heaven? I said, no. He was a superintendent of that Baptist church. But in that Sunday school, he began to show me some verses from the Bible. I don't even think I'd open the Bible. Romans 3.23, for all of sin comes short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 10.9 and 10, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we confess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God hath raised him, him, Jesus, from the dead, we shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Have you confessed today that Jesus is Lord? Then you're not saved. Have you believed in your heart that God raised him from the dead? If not, you're not saved. You're not saved. You need that faith. You need that faith, that saving faith of God's elect. You need to think about this season, Christmas. It's not about Christmas trees, folks. It's not about giving gifts. It's not about the mistletoe. It's not about Santa Claus. We don't even know that Jesus was, was born on December 25th. But it is a time to remember. We should always remember the, the, the birth, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But during this season, let us think about unto us is born in the city of David, a Savior, Jesus Christ, whose name was called Emmanuel, which being interpreted as God with us. My hope for you today, folks, is that you would begin to seek the Lord, the Messiah who came for Israel, but was rejected by the majority of the Jews of his day. The Jews today are still looking for the Messiah in vain when they look for him, until he appears again at his second appearance without sin into salvation. He's coming to judge the world. But it will be too late then. Because he will destroy this world by fire when his wrath consumes the wicked and all they that forget God. All they that have forsaken God will be destroyed. They will be condemned because they believe not in Christ. They said they believed in the Father but they did not receive his Son. But Jesus says, I and my Father are one. You cannot separate them. They are the same in essence and in power and glory. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The three in one. The blessed triune God. Well, I believe we have some gospel, uh, gospel tracks here, folks. If any of you are uh, curious what the gospel is, please come up and take one. May the Lord be with you. Who <laughs> read to you folks what John five twenty one says? Five twenty one. Well, Really back.